Hey, it's Moi Wagwan. I'm so excited for this word, God's hidden gem. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. You are God's hidden gem. But the world may not see it now. If people knew who you really were, they wouldn't treat you like a nobody. If they could see what you're carrying inside of you and how much you can be a blessing to them, they would think twice before even raising their voice at you. God is going to place an anointing inside of you that is so rich and unusual that even people who are blatantly agnostic, who have no desire to be nice to people, will have to reckon with it. Once they come in touch with the anointing, they will be transformed. You're going to leave an indelible mark on people to the point that they will speak about the God in you. They will testify like the woman of Samaria who said, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Sometimes people don't realize who they have in their presence. The person who is at the bottom today could be the one at the top tomorrow. However, people often treat others with disregard based on their status, appearance, or wealth. But God wants us to look at people differently. He wants us to look at their heart and test the spirits. The Bible says, do to others as you would have them do to you. That's in Matthew 7 verse 12. That's something I try my best to practice in my life. I'm not perfect, but I encourage you to do the same. Don't ever let anyone disrespect you or make you feel less than you are. You might be a diamond in your rough state right now, but one day you'll be the one that everyone admires. They can't have you because you're special to God. You are God's hidden gem. And the way they treat you will determine the relationship they will have with you. There are some people who will want to come close to you because of what's inside of you, but they can't because they're so ashamed of themselves. Not that you haven't forgiven them, but they are so ashamed and filled with contempt because of the way they treated you. Oh my gosh, Holy Spirit, hallelujah. They're going to be so upset with themselves, but it's too late. They can't go back and rewrite the past. And even though you extended grace to them, you've forgiven them, they have a hard time accepting it. You're not stupid to allow certain people in your presence any longer. You don't want them to taint the anointing. Saul wanted David so badly. He risked his life several times to kill him, but David spared him. He said, look, I could have killed you, but I didn't. And even in that moment, Saul didn't check himself. He died without repenting. Some people relegated themselves in your life. You didn't relegate them. They were unfair, disgusting, and dishonest. They said things behind your back, told lies, and spread rumors. They defamed you like Ziba did to Mephibosheth in 2 Samuel chapter 19, deceiving the king while he was in a vulnerable state and making him believe his lies and tricking the king into giving him all of Mephibosheth's blessing. They turned people who were supposed to bless you against you. They fought you instead of benefiting from you. But I want to encourage you today by saying this. It doesn't matter what they say or do. All things are working together for your good. God will use their negativity to propel you, hallelujah, into your purpose. What the devil meant for evil, God will turn it around for your good. You are God's hidden gem. He will clean up and put you back in front of the same people who scorned you. They will have no choice but to admire you. They can't afford you. They don't qualify to be around you. They can't pass security. They don't have the credentials to be in your presence. They have to stay back because God's blessing on you is going to be so big. Not everybody can come close to you. Not everyone can handle your anointing. It rubs them the wrong way. They have to keep their distance unless they come to you clean and corrected. Hallelujah. 
with the right spirit and with the right mindset. Otherwise, they will feel uneasy around you. Your very presence will disrupt the demons in them. Your character and your actions will make them think twice about being evil to anyone. You are a carrier of the anointing. God is with you. His presence is before you. Anyone who wants to face God has to qualify. You have humbled yourself. You have set yourself apart to be used by God. You fear him. You didn't run when things got hard. You didn't conform to the status quo. You decided that it doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter what the outcome is. It doesn't matter if God is not showing up for you. You still believe in him. You still have faith that he will come through for you. And because of that, God was able to reward you. Hallelujah. Because of that, you didn't get entangled in the yoke of bondage. You didn't get blinded by this world. You didn't fall for the enemy's lies. Hallelujah. They said they're living their best life. What are you doing? Trying to praise a God that's not even giving you the desires of your heart. That's making you suffer. That's how it looks on the outside. But you don't know the battles that they are facing because they don't have God. Because of the sins that they are committing. Because of that, they become slaves to their master. And now they have to live with the consequences. But you chose God. Hallelujah. And that's why you are God's hidden gem. Glory be to God. You are priceless. Not everyone can recognize you because you are hidden. It takes a peculiar people. It takes a peculiar person. And that is why some of you are still single right now. It's not because you don't look good. It's not because you don't have what it takes, as they would put it, to bag a man. But because God made you that way he hid you you are his hidden gem and when you are god's hidden gem not everyone can see you not everyone can see how beautiful you are inside and out but most importantly inside god is amazing when you are god's hidden gem it takes a peculiar person to recognize you it takes someone who loves god who has god to identify with your spirit to approach you in the right way, in a godly way, to understand what it means to wait until marriage. It's not outdated. It's needed more than ever in today's society. And the way society is running, everything is so corrupt right now. Everything is so adulterated. Everything is so raw. Everything is just out there. The things that God calls sacred are looked upon as burdensome. And the more people become lenient to the things of this world, the more they bend the rules of God, the worse things are going to get. They open more doors to the enemy, not only for today, but for generations to come. And that's the thing with sin and trials. It started with Adam and every generation is affected. But in the moment, it doesn't look that way. The impact is not visible. The apple was juicy until they were exiled from the garden. Sin looks good until the consequences come. Sometimes the consequences don't happen right away. Everything looks good. Everything looks lovely. Oh, I got a fine woman. I got the girls of my dream. I got a handsome man, the man of my dreams. And then five years down the road, you see why God said, wait, why it wasn't worth it. But the God of this world have blinded our eyes and we'll never see the consequences right away. They might even get rewarded at the time. They might even get rewarded years later until one day it finally comes to light. Oh my gosh, after all this, it was never worth it. All the pleasure was never worth it. No pleasure is worth the pain that comes with it. No pleasure is worth the reward that God has for you. Because your reward is not just for you, but for generations to come. God's hidden gem. Remember that you are God's hidden gem. You are loved by God. You will always be loved by God. And God will take special care of you. And he will ensure that those that are around you will take special care of you as well. Because he knows that you are going to do the same for the others around you you i hope you enjoy this video don't forget to like 
subscribe, follow